Hey ladies, welcome back to my Fierce Aging series. So I wanted to take you back to all my new subscribers to the time that I really started Fierce Aging. It was in March of 2019, and it was a really special month for me because I got to feature women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. And that's really what started off Fierce Aging. It wasn't going to be a series. It was just going to be a month of showing. That's what my audience asked for, and that's what I showed you. And then it really resonated. And then I started showing women from all over the country on my channel and it was so much fun. And so now it's become a series. We are in the middle of building out the studio. So in the meantime, I thought, let's bring my mom back. Let's feature her. Let's really celebrate being in your seventies, looking beautiful. And it was just such a really fun thing to do again. And I'm so happy I get to share her beauty with you. I get to share it. She, we put the Velcro curlers in, of course, you know me, I would never do, do another tutorial on any of my fierce aging ladies without the Velcro curlers. She just looks radiant, beautiful. So if you are in your seventies and feeling like you just, you know, you're not quite sure how to put your makeup on or just look fresh or look really pretty. This is a great tutorial. You can use any makeup. I'm just showing you what I use on my mom, what really brings her beauty to the forefront. And I hope you really enjoy this. So, so ladies, let's get this beauty started. This is very exciting because I have a lot of new subscribers and I featured her in my Fierce Aging series in March of 2019. And she actually told me no. I tell this story all the time. She actually told me no when I said, mom, I, ha I need to do this 70s decade. You will be perfect. Do you want to come into the studio? And you said, no, absolutely not. <laughs> And I said, I said, oh, okay, well, that's great, but I don't have anybody else. Like, I really need to do this. And then what happened? You thought about it, and then you called me back. I felt bad <laughs> for you. <laughs> so then she did it, which was such a great experience, and I was so thrilled that she would push herself and get out there, which is what the channel's all about. I said, Mom, if you're staging, it's all about doing things that you think you can't do or you're not that comfortable with or you're feeling like maybe, you know, you don't want to, I don't know if it was like, expose yourself with no makeup on to everyone on YouTube? No, it was just I'm very shy, so it was hard. <laughs> so she was really a great example of doing something, pushing herself, and then really enjoying it, which I think you do, because I brought you back in 2020. Yes, that was, that was easier. <laughs> so we've been through 2019, then we went through 2020, which was a little bit different when we did that makeup tutorial, and then we're back now. So we were dealing with, in 2019, you had said something that was really resonated with the ladies about feeling that you looked in the mirror and you were beige. You were like yes. one color. Yes. Like, like I didn't have a face. It was just, it was just very sad. Did you feel like this in your sixties? No, I don't remember. I, I don't recall feeling that way at that point in time. So it was seventies. I think so. Yeah. It was just all of a sudden, I think, I think that turning 70, just some things started changing. So now, you, we, we, when I featured you in 2019, you were 70? 70. 70. You were 70? Yeah. Okay. So now we are 74. Four. <laughs> All right. So do you still feel beige after we've done these makeup tutorials or have you changed your makeup? I don't feel beige so much because I use more color and I really like your cream blushes. I think that it just makes it look really natural. But what I have noticed is that I think that my eyes are starting to... I, I can't bring them up like I used to. So you feel like your eyes are looking tired? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to address putting more color into the skin, working around the eye area, but not looking like she's wearing a ton of makeup because my mom doesn't love wearing a ton of makeup. She doesn't look, want to look covered. She just wants to feel pretty and feel kind of like fresh. And we're, we're working back with the bottled blonde because it's a sheen and it's something different. She used to wear all mattes and they were in the gray family. And I think that's kind of wasn't something that really made you excited. Right. It didn't brighten. It was subdued, too subdued, I think. And did you do that? Cause that was basically what you've done forever. Yes. And you just stuck with it. So we're going to go into a, this beautiful makeup tutorial. I love saying beautiful because that's what it is. We're going to feel beautiful. We're going to feel inspired. We're going to feel confident. And that's really what 
I want to do for Mother's Day. I called mom this morning and I was like, you know what I want to do? I want to do your makeup. Uh, it's Mother's Day tomorrow. We're going to do this. We're going to put it up on Monday. Encourage all the ladies to really play with makeup and to feel amazing. I'm going to start first with the vitamin E because this is a big thing for my mom. Her lips are always dry and I'm always telling her to put on the lip balm, moisturize those lips because your lipstick is not going to look nice ladies if you have dry chap lips and you know what that looks like when you put your lipstick on and then you see all of those dry patches which you know about <laughs> yeah i do i'm going to start off with something that i bought at the sephora sale this is a luxury product that i felt was luxurious to buy is the shiseido facial cotton <laughs> it was on sale so i used my 20 percent so this is amazing though, because I cut them in half, because I try to preserve them as much as possible, but they are the softest cotton, and I had the rounds that I was buying actually in bulk at Costco, and when I would go around my eye, they would scratch, and I thought, you know what? I wanna try the Shiseido, and these are beautiful. I'm gonna put the Ever Beauty Water just to cleanse my mom's skin first, and you're gonna see how these feel. I mean, this is like a little luxury, so every time I use them, I'm always like, oh, this feels so good. You know, because you use those Costco rounds. That's true, I do. And how do those, compared to this, I mean, doesn't this feel like... Yeah, this is very soft. Silk on the face. You can feel the difference. Ugh, it's so nice. I'm going to go in with the Ever Quench. This is an advanced hydrating booster. I want to just really get a lot of moisture into my mom's skin. Not too much, but I do, it definitely makes a huge difference to get that moisture into the skin lightweight products you don't want something that's going to be super super heavy on the skin this is going to just really prep the skin before our makeup i'm going to seal in that really beautiful hydro quench with the ever daytime brightening serum this is a vitamin and c booster and i'm actually going to just i'm going to show my mom the gua sha that's coming out i just asked her have you ever used a gua sha and she said, no. So this is a gua sha. I've showed it in some of my videos recently and I really love doing this every morning or you can do it at night and it really just helps drain the fluid. It's a very simple, easy and expensive way to really contour the face, get that blood flow, draining that extra fluid. So I wanna see how you feel. You're gonna see how these are here. Mm -hmm. Just grab the cheekbone and, and pull out towards your ear. All right. Mm -hmm. Like this? Yeah. And just keep doing it nice and mm -hmm, smooth. How does it feel? Am I going too high on it? No. Oh, just be good. Yeah, I just want to be... nice and cool. And it's sliding nicely over this uh, oil that you put on. And then I do it mm -hmm. over here. And how long do you do this? You can do, you know, like, you can do 10 times. You can do, you want to do three to five minutes. And do you keep this in the refrigerator? I mean, you can, but it's nice and cool because it's stainless steel. Mm -hmm. So you can just do it like that. And then it's going, you can start kind of feeling how you're draining that fluid back towards your ear area. Uh -huh. So the skincare is prepped. You can see that beautiful glowy skin right now. It's very nice and hydrated. We're going to go right into an eye primer. I show, show you that I use this eye primer that is a nice creamy formula. And I'm going to go to the base of the lash line all the way up to the brow bone. And it's just going to take out any of that pigmentation, any of that redness, any of those blues or grays, everything we don't like. So it's going to be just nice and silky. You don't need a lot. This, is, this color is light medium. You don't want white on your eye, eyelids and you don't want a really dark color. This is going to be kind of in that middle, that middle color of just correcting you'll see that it has a little yellow tinge to it so it's going to really correct that darkness and then we're going to be ready to go right into our eyeshadow i'm using the bottled blonde this is going to be a beautiful color just very in the neutrals but it's going to just bring her eyes alive and we're using my essential makeup brush kit that is out it's coming back in in june you're going to be very excited there are some surprises that are coming out with the new brush palette. So I'm going to just go right into the middle color here and I'm going to sweep across. You're going to see how you're going to get that nice pop, that sheen coming out. You can, again, like the last week, I just used this one color on my eye and that was it. But you can use all three, you can use one, you can use two, whatever you want to do just to get a really nice, easy, soft, fresh look. 
Just gonna take the other side of the brush and go into the lightest color here and just sweep up over the brow bone. I'm gonna take this smudge brush and I'm gonna go into the darkest color. Just gonna be really nice to give that dimension right in this outer corner. And I'm just gonna work it in just so it's nicely fused into this eyeshadow that I already put on. Again, you don't have to just use the brush if you wanna go in with your finger. There are no rules on how you blend, how you get the look that you want. Again, this is very soft, this is very light. It's about being in your 70s, feeling that you can put on makeup and really just enhance your look. It's not about, I always say this, it's not about YouTube videos that I'm taking my mom and I'm like transforming her face into something it's not and that she wouldn't feel comfortable with. This is just giving that enhancement, taking your beauty, taking it to the next level. This is your makeup application to give you that really just great feeling. I'm gonna go in with the dark chocolate waterproof eyeliner. My mom's a very good example of having very fine lashes. We've talked about this a lot of times. They're very straight, they're very fine, they're very thin. So in order to thicken up her lash line and not try to overpack her lashes with mascara, we're going to do really pretty eyeliner that's very tight to her eyes. It's in the actual lash, right above in the lash line. So you're doing little strokes like this and you're thickening up this lash line. So she's gonna make it look like she has more lashes than she does right in here, but she's not looking like she has a big heavy eyeliner. That's my biggest thing. It's gonna look really, really just very polished, very approachable, and she'll feel very comfortable with her eyes lined. The eyeliner is on and it's right in those lashes. Now we can take the smudge brush and we can smoke it up a little bit to work with the liner that we just did. So we can just move the liner up a little bit if we wanted to see it a little bit more. You're just really working with what you have or you can take the eyeliner again, you can go just above it and then you're going to smudge it up. So you don't have to be too precise here, you can let it be a little bit more messy. You don't have to be perfect. And this is something great if you have shaky hands, if you can't apply your eyeliner perfectly, don't worry. This is why I call it the eraser brush. You go back in and you smooth everything out. So it's just gonna give you a nice little, just that shadowing. My mom's very fair, and so when you put a, a dark chocolate is what I always would choose. I would never put black on her, it's just too harsh. I like to balance out the eye by putting a little on the bottom. So this gives her a, that definition. It's not over the top, but at least she's getting something that's going to outline her eyes and define them. Also, my mom's eyes water a lot, so that's why I'm using waterproof. So I'm going to give my mom the Shuomura eyelash curler to curl her lashes and I'm going to get the mascara ready and we're going to use, we just came off of that video I did with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, that, that mascara that had a 45,000 person wait list, which was so crazy. And I'm going to be showing you the, with shorter lashes like my mom's that are really 
thin and delicate. You, you can't have a really big fluffy brush because you're going to really not be able to get the lashes. It's very frustrating for women that have more fine lashes or they're just as you're aging, they get a little bit thinner. So I have a wand that is a little curved and it has teeth on both sides and it's flat. So this is going to be able to help my mom when she's applying her mascara, get to the base, grip those lashes and pull up so she can actually deposit the mascara on the lashes. So you'll see that her lashes don't really curl as much as I, you know, we would like them to. So we're gonna just look down. We're gonna take the wand, we're gonna go to the base and it like grips them, you can feel it and we pull up. So you're gonna get a beautiful application. You can see how they just hold onto the lash, we pull up. So these lashes really nicely get coated when they don't even look like she has that much. And again, the issue I was having with the Charlotte Tilbury was that the wand was putting so much product on the lid and it was so messy. So this is something that you really wanna pay attention to. Everyone has to find the right mascara wand for them and their lashes. Everyone has different lashes. But this is a great wand for my mom because she has these little lashes that really are beautiful once you can bring them out with the right mascara, the right brush. This would be a really great time to use a heated eyelash curler to set the lashes up. So that is something else that's coming in or back in the stock. We really have upgraded and redesigned our heated eyelash curler. So we're very excited about that. So now we're gonna go into the brows. So this is nice, the eyes are done. So we're gonna go into the brows and you can see my mom's eyebrow is higher on this side and she really doesn't have a lot of arch and she doesn't have a lot of hair, just laterally. That's just what happens. Um, as she's been aging, this is getting thinner and she has more hair here. So we could take the stencils. If you're having a really hard time understanding how to shape out your brows, we do have stencils or just a little cheat sheet for you that you can do like so. So you got four different sizes and classic arch, slim arch, full arch, and bold arch. So for instance, if I did this slim arch on my mom, you would basically where your brow starts and you would just match it up and it would show you the shape that would be really beautiful as a slim, if you wanted just a nice slim, and you would just fill this all in. So you could do that if you wanted to. Um, those are really nice when you kind of are trying to get an idea of what kind of shape you wanna do. You can experiment with all four, stick to one. I'm gonna go in with skinny brow pencil and taupe, and I'm gonna just map out her brows. We're gonna do something really natural, but what I would like to do is, I would like to give her some more body, some more arch on this. So it matches more there. I don't need to go as high, but I want it to look like it's, you know, the same, the same brow coming over onto the left side. So we're gonna just go straight up. She's starting where she should. So you go from the outside of the nose straight up, ball of the nose over. You're gonna see she's arching where she's supposed to. And then corner of the nose, corner of the eye right here. I don't like to make the brows too long. I don't want to drag down the face, but we have here starting where she should over the ball. So we're going to see she should arch right here. I'm going to just put a little, little mark there. So I know, and then the corner of the nose, corner of the eye. And I like to, when it goes to the corner of the eye, it should be here. I go a little bit shorter so I can see where I need to be. So we're going to just take the brow pencil and I like to create hair strokes. That's really the idea. So you can see the tuft of hair and then it kind of drops off and you got this thin, thin line here. What you want to do is find at the end, see underneath here, that's, that's our area. We need to match the two together. We need to bridge them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this line from our hair that she has right into this hair here. And don't worry if your pencil gets a little, that's what the spoolie's for, it'll blend everything out. So you can see I'm building underneath. That's what's going to save you ladies. You're gonna build underneath the brow and then you're going to be able to create that consistent line. We're gonna give it a little arch like it has. We're gonna give it a nice tail See how this is the key, it's right here. We are making that brow 
one. So it's not like this is one part and this is two parts. So we have the full brow just being able to go nicely together. Same thing on this side. So we're going to start creating those hair strokes. So this hair seems to be shorter also because it's lower. So we're going to bring it up, get those nice strokes going. So what we need to do on this brow here, since we're not as high as that left brow, we don't want to build underneath here because we're okay. We need to build on top. So what I'm going to do is just keep that nice strokes, that natural stroking, coming up. So we know where we're supposed to arch here. So we're just going to keeping the brow moving, following her own natural brow. We're going to bring it up and then we're going to bring it down. See how we're creating right here a nice arch for her. Smooth it out with the spoolie. Go back, see where you missed maybe some little areas. Again, you see how the brow pencil is being utilized. The technique is about wispy hairs following the hair, the natural hair growth. It is not building out a template and filling it all in. That looks very unnatural, looks waxy, doesn't look pretty in my opinion. So this is a beautiful way to, do you see how they're coming together now? This might be a little light, so we can go in a little bit harder with our application to get more deposit of that color. Spoolie it out so it doesn't look too dark in areas. You can use a different brow color if you want to, to give it more of an ombre. Maybe you start lighter, go darker, or maybe you go darker and you start lighter, depending on what you want to do. It's really up to you. So you can see that this is a nice taupe color for her brows. If we wanted to give her some more definition because her brow hair is a little bit darker and then we go into lighter, I can take a medium brown pencil and I can literally do just the strokes where I want to emphasize the brow. So if I, she needs a little help here, marrying the hair to not having any hair, I can easily do that with a darker color, work it out, Nothing, if you don't like your brows, you can start over. It's just a brow pencil. You can start over. If they look too dark, if they look too light, it's really up to what, how you see your brows. But she has more hair, hair on the left side. It's going to look a little bit darker because of her hair. We're going to just try to, we're not trying to get them to be exactly the same. We want them just to frame her face and it's, and it's an appropriate color for her. We're working with taupe and we just did a couple strokes of a medium brown. It's not overdoing it, we're not going to town, but we want to have a nice symmetry and we want to have it to be really beautiful. So once it all comes together, we put the foundation or the BB cream on, we put the concealer, it'll all come together. We're gonna go into color correcting just underneath the eyes, keeping it very simple for my mom still. So it's almost lighter, you can see. She doesn't have a lot of darkness. I mean, it's almost like it's a lighter pinky blue tone. So we're just going to take the Just Peachy color corrector, it's a peach color. We're going to take a concealer brush and we're going to just work on this, really getting the color correction here. It's really more of that, those blues and greens that she's working with underneath the eye area. So I don't wanna to go too heavy with lots of concealer. I just want to use the Just Peachy. It's going to be medium to full coverage. We can still build up on it, but you're going to see as we start applying this, how it's starting to even and correct this bluish green color underneath the eye area. Don't forget to really get into this area here where that has that pocket of blue. It's almost like this little pocket of blue and you also have the shading from your nose. So I like to get in there making sure that we're lightening that up. We don't miss it because you'll definitely see it once you finish your makeup. It's it just kind of stands out. So you can see, 
It's beautiful color correction, lightweight, not slippery, not heavy. And then you'll see all of the, the greens and the blues in the darkness that you have right in here. So we like to color correct that area and then we're going to really make it all come together when we put the BB cream on. So the color corrector is on. Something that I like to do that is a really great tip for you if you're seeing darkness on your inner waterline on the bottom, I just take a nude pencil. This is not white, it's a nude pencil. And what I do is I go right into the waterline, taking out that redness, taking out that darkness. It just neutralizes, makes the eyes look more awake. So this is something that my mom was saying she doesn't feel that she, her eyes look tired. This is a great way because you've color corrected that under eye area, blues, greens, any darkness. And then you have that, it's almost like you're, you're skipping and you have this darkness, this redness on the inner waterline. So easily be able to neutralize it with a nude pencil. It's one of the best tricks as makeup artists that we have. Really beautiful, simple, easy technique to do to really give the eyes that refreshed look. We're gonna do a BB cream Today, we're gonna to just do the fair and the light, mix the two colors together. I do wanna warm up my mom's skin. I don't want it to be too dark for her though. So I'm going to just mix the two colors together and this is going to give her a burst of hydration. It's going to be lightweight on her skin. This is something that just will give her skin that extra radiance. And we're just gonna take our foundation buffing brush and we're going to work it in. And one thing I want to do also is I'm going to add a little poolside. I was excited to put this in. This is a little bronzing kind of um, illuminator for her skin, just, just a little bit, not too much, because again, we're fair. And speaking of being really fair, I would put sunscreen on my mom if she was going out or we were doing this and she was gonna, we we're gonna spend the day together and be out. Again, sunscreen is really up to you on what you choose. So I like to mention that because I do use sunscreen, but I don't always put it in every single makeup tutorial. So we're going to work this into the skin. We want to warm up the skin. Buffing it in with the foundation buffing brush is just a really beautiful way to get that just glowy, natural, pretty look to the skin. Just buff this into the skin, brought it down to the neck. Really looks nice when you just get the whole skin uniformed. How does it feel? It feels very nice. It's very light and cool. Cool, that's to say you feel the hydration, right? Mm -hmm. I know, that's what I love. It's like a burst of hydration. It has a cucumber, the aloe, ginseng. So I'm gonna go in with just uh, the translucent powder just to set, just in the T-zone area here. It's nice, especially here in South Florida. It doesn't matter what we do we will want to reinsure our makeup, give it that assurance. Gonna go in with Palm Beach. This is my favorite cream blush. You like wearing this? Mm -hmm. I do. This is what, did I, did you start using it after 2018? Um, I used that and I also used uh, Plum. Oh, when we had that, yeah, mm -hmm. smile. So you can see going right into the skin, I mean, just look at how it gives her that color. So when she was feeling beige, I think you were wearing powdered. Were you wearing powdered blush? What blush were you wearing? Powdered. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
When she uses a cream though, this is going to give her that really beautiful radiance from within. So you're, you're adding on this cream blush. It's not heavy, it's not powdery, it's not chalky. It's not making you look like, oh, I added color, but it's not really giving me that glow. This is going to, you can see, smile. I like to just tap it and you can layer if you want to. You can really build it up, but my mom has these beautiful cheekbones that I love. My skin seems to be deflating. Yours seems to be staying beautiful, nice and beautiful cheeks there. I always say that. I always wanted to have her cheeks. I was like, your cheeks are nice and plump. My skin seems to be coming down. We have the blush on looking radiant and glowy. Wait until you see what it looks like. So we have two options we can do with lips. I mean, we can, if we really want to punch it up with just a really pretty pink, we can do Franny. Or we can do, I'm wearing Pretty Smart, so we could do Pretty Smart, which is a softer pink. So you can see a nice brighter pink for her or a softer pink. Either one would look beautiful. Mix them together, why not? I'm gonna use Glacier Pink as my lip liner first, and then we'll figure out which one you wanna do. We'll see what you wanna do. So should we go for the lip lift that I did, that I showed you before, my mom? Possibly. We could do a little, just on the top. I'm gonna to show you how it works. Oh, on, on someone in their 70s. This is something that is a great technique. It's not, it's not too much. What you're gonna do is, you see this top lip? So we lose color as we're aging. That's why a lip liner is so important, ladies. You want to line your lips. You wanna give that definition. So we really don't see a lot of top lip right here because we did some foundation over it. The BB cream's basically kind of concealing the lip a little bit. So we're going to just not dip down with the Cupid's bow. If you like that look, you, you do that. That's amazing. But this look, I'm going to just connect them. So they ha she has a little bit of a fuller top lip, nothing major, just following her lip line. But right here, I'm just making it so it looks a little poutier. Why not? I don't think I've ever done this on you, have I? Did I ever do it? No. Mm -mm. So it's just gonna still look natural and very pretty, but I'm just giving her a little boost. It's like a little push up right here. So I just fill in the lips a little bit because it's gonna give her lipstick a little bit more staying power. I'm gonna do Franny, which is named after my French bulldog, Francesca, and everybody in the studio would come in and call her Franny. And I thought, okay. And she always wore pink, so we named, so she's kind of like our mascot in the studio. So we call, this is our color named after our little beautiful French bulldog, always wearing pink. So we have the lipstick on, it is high gloss, but I always do a nice topper over with my Champs. This is going to be a nice kind of like topping for, I love when they do champagne cocktails and they just add the, the little extra on the top of a, a little fizzy, right? So that's what I kind of feel like this is, just a little fizzy, just in the middle. You can see that beautiful highlight it's giving, just right in the middle. And I think it looks really pretty pink in this, beautiful champagne color. So I took down the Velcro curlers, which my mom is the OG of the Velcro curlers. That's why I started the Velcro curlers and it gives her so much volume. I did her hair, so it's probably more height than she's probably used to, so it'll be interesting. But I'm gonna show you the look, see what you think. Oh, wow, that's great. Do you like the volume? <laughs> I do. Anytime I do my mom's hair or makeup or I'll do lashes, I always that looks great. I always take it to the next level because I know that she wouldn't normally <laughs> she wouldn't make it as high, but I know it's gonna fall. So I think it looks I think it actually looks really good. But it looks great. All right, so tell the ladies why you use Velcro curlers with the thin, very thin limp hair. Well, they gave me the most volume, but but the trick that Nicole taught me today was using the dry shampoo before you put the curlers in and then you spray them with hairspray and this gives you the height. Um, I had been using heat, heated, the heated curlers. I also tried the, the what is it called? The, oh, the, the styler? Yeah, I tried the styler. But it was a big one. It was a very large, you couldn't get your hair around it. Right, and it wouldn't keep, it wouldn't keep the curl. And these, this was the only thing that did, and I love them. It's the easiest thing to do. It only takes about 10 minutes, and you can hold, it holds your hair up for hours. 
Well, you know what I, what I think is so interesting though, when I do my mom's makeup, so when she doesn't have any makeup on, she has a totally different attitude. Like she definitely is, you know, she's a, she has a different attitude. When I put the makeup on, how do you feel? And this is simple makeup. Oh, I like the idea that it's so simple that it does, it's not complicated, it's not heavy, it's light. And I feel like I have more of a finished look so I can meet the public. <laughs> so yeah, I like it. I like it very much. I just think, I think it looks so beautiful. And ladies, this is a very approachable look anyone can do. You just find the right eyeshadows that you love working with and that you know that it's your, it's your go-to. And so you have that confidence when you go into your makeup bag and you say, oh, this looks beautiful on me. I know this is gonna look great or I love this foundation or BB cream. And you just, you enjoy the finished look because you feel confident, you feel beautiful. Whether you're in your 70s, whether you're in your 80s, 90s, 40s, 50s, wherever you are on the spectrum, it's about taking that time to really enhance yourself, feel good, and really just show up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, this was really fun. I'm so happy Fierce Aging is back. Intermit this is like an intermittent, um, while we're building out the studio, right? We had to come back on Fierce Aging. I, I was like, we have to do it, Mom. <laughs> we have to do it. Like, I, I've been talking about it with the ladies and we can't wait to get back. We can't wait to feature all of you. It's gonna be a very big celebration. And until my next video, I'll see you later.